And when I say paleontological dig site, I'd put money on the first image coming into your mind being a bunch of people in the middle of the Badlands with hammers and brushes, cowboy hats, caravans, and a crate of beer. But some are surrounded by traffic and skyscrapers. Field research in paleontology is not something where you get the same day twice. Anything can happen, and with the exception of Antarctica and the ocean, it can happen anywhere. Moreover, it often happens over much longer periods of time than people realise. We're not talking weeks or months of research, sometimes we're talking years. In fact, some research teams are there for so long that they might as well set up a permanent post there. And whilst they're at it, they might as well set up a museum on site for people visit that will help fund the work. One such site is the La Brea Tar Pits in the middle of Los Angeles. These pits were first written about in 1769 by a group of Spanish explorers, and subsequent specimens were found over the years, but were disregarded as remains from animals that had died whilst living there at the ranch that was subsequently built there, since they were completely covered in tar. It wasn't actually until 1901 that these were recognised as actual fossilised material, and excavations began in 1913, where they have continued ever since. Thankfully, the owner of the land, George Allen Hancock, realised the scientific importance of this site and donated 23 acres to Los Angeles County for the purposes of preservation and research, before LA's Natural History Museum built and opened the George C. Page Museum of La Brea Discoveries in 1977. An on-site museum opened to the public to keep interest alive, allow people to witness a real paleontological excavation in the works, and to store and further study all of the findings. But geologically, what is this place? Well, beneath the earth of Los Angeles are stores of crude oil that seep up through the fault system so prevalent on the west coast of the US, forming oil pools and eventually mounds of asphalt. Now this oil continues to seep to the surface to this day, especially in areas around the park, but this has been going on for tens of thousands of years. Sometimes this oil forms large, thick enough pools that trap animals. As the oil pools sat exposed at the surface, they would become disguised under water or leaves, only for some poor unsuspecting animal to walk through them. Now this wasn't usually a case of an animal sinking into it like quicksand before it eventually suffocated. Instead, they wouldn't usually sink any further than maybe ankle depth, acting more like megafauna flypaper. Here's the thing though, if you walk through a puddle of this stuff that isn't even thick enough to submerge the sole of your shoe, you're still going to have to say goodbye to that shoe. And then the other shoe. And then your socks. Jesus, stop walking through it! So from here the animal would be unable to move, eventually succumbing to dehydration or starvation. Rinse, dry, and repeat for tens of thousands of years and you get a site where, even after over a hundred years of excavation, Fossils are still turning up to this day. Speaking of the fossils, as of this video, the oldest radiometrically dated specimen to have been recovered from this site is around 38,000 years old, making Pleistocene flora and fauna very prevalent. Plants and invertebrates are found often here, giving us an incredibly high resolution picture of the climate and ecosystem at the time, showing temperate, evergreen, and sometimes riparian forests, not too dissimilar to the natural forests in the USA today albeit slightly colder and wetter. Invertebrates found at this site are close to countless, with a mixture of freshwater and terrestrial invertebrates. But despite the abundance of these, that's nothing compared to the relative number of mammals. La Brea is a classic textbook example of what is known as a predator trap. So what is this? Well, large herbivores such as a herd of mammoths, ground sloths like Megalonyx, or North Ophiriops, or even ancient bison would come along, minding their own business, munching away in vegetation, before becoming stuck in the aforementioned puddles. Then they would do what any reasonable animal would do and freak the f*** out. Other animals get rattled and get the hell out of there, or maybe they stay around in concern for a herd member and possibly get stuck themselves. Then you have some very big mammals making a lot of noise and attracting attention. Now if we look at the opposite end of the food web, predators would sense this. Maybe they hear the struggling or smell the death and think they're quids in. Carnivores such as packs of direwolves, short-faced bears, American lions, 
coyotes or saber-toothed cats then come along and find a buffet of struggling or already dead herbivores. So then what happens? Well, they walk right on over and I think you can guess what happens next. They then get trapped and joining on the slow horrific death party and the bodies just pile up from there. More and more carnivores especially will be attracted by the noise or more likely the smell of these stuck carcasses until we have a deposit which is just a vertebra fossil making factory and good god was its turnover high. From La Brea over 650 species of fauna have been named, 140 of which were birds and crates upon crates of mammals. Recovered here have been around 30 individuals of Arctodus, the most of any site in the world despite only making up around 1% of mammals here, 3,000 individuals of Smilodon, and 4,000 direwolf individuals. And they are still digging. There's even been a human found in these pits, known as the Labrea woman. This was the partial skeleton of a young woman aged between 17 and 25 from around 10,000 years ago. So, as you can guess, it really can't be overstated just how many fossils reside in the middle of a city. If you live anywhere on the west coast of the US and haven't been yet, please go for me, because this is on my bucket list. But, I suppose until I catch you guys there, I will just have to catch you next time.